welcoming in Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. Many, 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 many years of working with and being made aware of. Uh, going back to the late, great brother Dick Rowland and here today. Can't wait to get started. Ted Kafalas joins us, Director of Strategic Campaigns for Grassroots Institute of Hawaii. Ted, it's our first time together, but it's a pleasure to see you. Yeah, likewise, Rick. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. Would you mind sharing just a bit about yourself and your role with Grassroot Institute? And we'll jump into a myriad of topics. Sure, absolutely. So I, I'm originally from Virginia, but uh, don't hold that against me. <laughs> I, I had to get out of the swamp, actually, and uh, yeah. my fiancé has some family here. So Hawaii made a, a perfect sense move, and I, I have to say that everybody, I've been so lucky to have met uh, some wonderful people. I mean, everybody's been so filled with warmth and aloha, and so I'm just so grateful for that. But mm -hmm. As you mentioned, I work as the Director of Strategic Campaigns at the Grassroot mm -hmm. Institute, and essentially that's just a fancy way of saying registered lobbyist. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of what I do is I'm trying to put the good work that we're doing at the Grassroot Institute into the hands of lawmakers, but also the public, and just trying to disseminate as much information as possible. Um, a lot of what I do is I spend my time meeting with legislators behind the scenes, testifying at committee hearings, um, but also trying to organize advocacy groups, getting people on the ground um, to to be interested in some of these issues, because quite yeah. honestly, sometimes the budget can be a little boring. Yeah. Um, so, you know, trying to do a lot of that. And, and for any of, of your listeners that don't know really too much about us, I know, Joe, you've had Joe Kent and, and my mm -hmm. colleague Malia Hill mm -hmm. on previously. But just a little quick uh, refresher. We're a, a local nonprofit think tank based in downtown Honolulu. And we're really focused on lowering the cost of living and trying to hold the government accountable. And I think those are two pillars that people can really get behind. Um, so a, a little bit more about me. I, I previously worked as a lobbyist uh, for Tesla Motors, the electric mm -hmm. vehicles, as well as, uh, I know you're a sports guy, so mm -hmm. FanDuel and DraftKings. I, I worked to get sports betting passed in a few states on the mainland. Um, but I have to say working at Grassroot has been by far the most rewarding experience of my life because I get to get back to public service. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do this for the bottom line. We don't do this for our stockholders. We do this because we truly care and, you know, we, we just want to see a better Hawaii. So I'm really excited to be here with you today and uh, really looking forward to talking through some of these topics. Uh, I would love to have you come back at 12 noon. We have the Poor Sports Radio Show on Fox Sports 990 we're doing a little bit later, but more on that in a moment. You mentioned the word accountability, and grassroots is absolutely essential in informing the public. Two points. One, what is your perception of the consumption and processing and discernment of the information you provide? And secondly, can you give us a little bit of an assessment of l local uh, legislators, council members, executive branch, what your impression is in compare and contrast uh, to Virginia or other experiences? Sure. I think, you know, to be quite honest, everybody here has been much more open and willing to listen. I, and, you know, coming here, you think to, oh, it's a, it's a blue state. It's completely blue in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they have one train of thought. But it's, it's actually funny because the Democratic Party here is so complex. It's a big umbrella party. So you have folks that fall into that blue dog Democrat uh, kind of mentality, and then you have the the far left progressives, um, and then they're all considered Democrats. So mm -hmm. you know everybody is willing to listen. And and one thing that we've been really fortunate at Grassroot is that legislators have been very open to meeting with us, talking us through um, specific legislation. We've we actually proposed 15 model bills this year that that were introduced and. Got one across the finish line, which was the, the Interstate Medical Licensure yep, Compact. So right. that was a, a big step forward. We're excited to see what's next. I think, you know, on the council level, we've been working closely a lot with, with Tommy Waters and um, Andrea Topola and a few others that have really been interested in this property tax issue. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's kind of talking about it. Everybody saw their property taxes skyrocket recently. So trying to figure out what are those solutions what are, you know, short-term but also long-term solutions for people because this isn't a problem that's going away anytime soon. So, you know, in that regard, everybody has been, you know, much more responsive. I, I remember when I first moved out here, to be quite honest, 
and everybody, you know, I was just cold calling people. Mm -hmm. I I didn't have a ton of contacts Mm -hmm. and people were responsive. You don't get that in D.C. Everybody's kind of shut off. If you don't know people, then you're not getting a meeting. So it it was a a breath of fresh air coming here and, and really excited for what comes next. I love all of this, talking with uh, Ted from Grassroot. And, Ted, now that legislation session, legislative session is over, of course, governor is still discerning and deciding. But what is the focus now that the session is over for Grassroot? Sure. Well, I mean, you, you mentioned it, session's over. We're, we're still working with the governor. I know you had Malia on last week mm-hmm. to talk about bills that, that he can sign and veto. We're really glad that he went forward and signed the uh, pass-through entity legislation. So that that's a huge relief for businesses here in Hawaii. But aside from that, you know, city council never sleeps. And so we have been active in Honolulu City Council. We've been active on Maui, Kauai, and, and Big Island, really talking about these things. You know, I mentioned property taxes earlier. Uh, we actually came out with a report that takes a look at some of these uh, relief measures, goes through each county, and, and believe me, that was no easy measure because – it's like comparing apples to oranges mm-hmm. in certain cases. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that report's actually on our website. It's free if anybody wants to go on there. It's grassrootinstitute.org, um, not .com, .org, mm-hmm. um, and, and really trying to, to look at solutions there. But uh, also, you know, I think everybody's talking about DPP, permitting. Amen. That is a huge, huge backlog. I think we're facing something like 200 and some odd days right now uh, that people have to wait. So um, we are are working closely. Andrea Topola has a measure that passed last night, um, which we can sure get into later on in the program. But um, that was a a great start to trying to relieve some of that backlog and get people out of line uh, in a sense so that we just have less people waiting. Um, And then, you know, we also I think there's a long uh, conversation that's that's been happening about short-term rentals. Um, so many people, you know, there's people that fall on both sides of the issue where folks will say, oh, you know, our neighborhood should stay neighborhoods and then others, you know, should, should be able to profit from a tourism industry. And to be quite honest, our tourism industry is what is driving our economy. So to say that locals can't take part in that and that we're just going to favor these multinational corporations seems a little wrong to me. So mm-hmm. we've been working closely with them on that, but not to forget long-term renters either. I mean, that's something, too. We want to try to incentivize property owners to rent out their, their properties to long-term term renters. So uh, working with the council here and, and on Kauai and Big Island to try to figure out what that uh, proper solution is. So we are, um, uh, you know, constantly in communications with them. We are um, working behind the scenes, testifying at committee hearings. I do also want to say, not to be too long-winded, but we are constantly the only ones at committee hearings. Aside from a few high-profile ones, we are usually the only people there. And so if you are passionate about these issues, about permitting, about property taxes, you need to, to go and make your voice heard. It's, it's not enough to just complain on Facebook or Instagram. You know, and I know it's tough to, to take the time out, but reach out to your council people, reach out to your state legislators. You'd be surprised how much of a difference you can make. One of the keys to uh, grassroots, a nonpartisan uh, organization. This, I don't sense and never have that there is a political agenda. However, the uh, advancements that you're talking about uh, do fall into a common sense definition. Makes total sense on short term rental. Your property, your investment, your freedom to utilize as you will. In a responsible way, yes, in consideration of others, but not to have mandates that right. eliminate entirely your opportunity. Well, and the short-term rental, too, is, is such a, a tricky issue. I know people are, are upset by the disturbance that they can cause in the neighborhoods, but there's already ordinances and, and right. laws that deal with that. So if people That's are right. causing a disturbance late at night, I mean, you can call the police and, and you know get them involved in that situation. It's not necessarily because they're renting it out. That could happen with a long-term renter, too. I mean, you know, everybody's had a noisy neighbor here and there, so. Yep. I'll tell you one thing that's interesting to put on the table that I talk about consistently 
is our cost of living, obviously. I did a comparison with Las Vegas. It's a 51% difference in the cost of living. Here we have the exit of many, many families, Mm -hmm. even businesses, etc. What is your take on the COL? What is a solution to help mitigate further increases? And what is the association with what's taking place in Congress and with the administration, President Biden, in this incredible escalation of our debt and more? Sure. I, I think, you know, it's it's funny to me because legislators and lawmakers, whenever they're running in, in November, they're always saying, oh, we need to lower the cost of living. We need to lower the cost of living. And, you know, we saw it at the state level this year and, and we see it at the county level as well, where they have these huge windfalls of revenue and they almost don't know what to do with it. So mm-hmm. they decide, oh, instead of giving that money back to the people, we're just going to spend it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and usually... That's right. As we've seen with, you know, these government projects like the rail and and Aloha Stadium now, you know, these things are just going to increase costs every, you know, year they're delayed. And it's almost inevitable that these projects are going to be delayed constantly. So, you know, I I was talking with, with Tommy Waters and a few others on how to create relief, but still balance the budget. You know, we don't want to it, – it, well, it would be nice to cut everybody's taxes by 100%. There still are needs in the, in the city and county and the state, so we have to find that proper balance. Um, and, and that's why we've been looking at these relief measures. Um, but just going back to what you're saying, you know, looking at, at city and county of Honolulu, the property tax assessments have – grown, I think revenue is up $212 million. This, they, they recently last night passed a bill that would give $350 tax credit to all homeowners and property uh, taxpayers. So, well, homeowners, excuse me. Mm-hmm. So that alone cost $50 million or so. So they still have $160 million in the bank that they are, you know, kind of using as funny money to take on any kind of projects that they want, and um, they're just spending it however they wish. And, you know, the state did the same thing, where they ended up spending all of this money. So for us, we would much rather either give the money back to taxpayers, put it in some sort of a, a rainy day fund, but but ultimately stop the the crazy spending on these projects that are never going to come to fruition. I I would like to bring up briefly, and that has to do about housing once again. And even the moves afoot by our government to increase these punitive taxes if you are a homeowner and you have an empty home. Ted, that is not because you're costing our community by not having occupation of your private property. Thoughts? You know, there are proposals at, at City Council, at, at Honolulu, and, and Big Island uh, to, to tax these empty homes at an exorbitant rate. And again, this is kind of an easy scapegoat because a lot of these properties are, are vacant and they're not necessarily voters. Uh, so legislators mm-hmm. can easily point to these empty homes and say, this is the reason why we don't have uh, housing in our, in our communities. And the reason these homes can be vacant is because they can afford it. To be Mm -hmm. quite honest, I mean, even if you were to convince these homeowners to sell or or rent out their properties, they're not going into the affordable housing market. Mm -hmm. These are, you know, multi-million dollar mansions, kind of. And so they're either going to pay the tax or they're just going to to sell it to someone else that's pretty wealthy. Mm -hmm. So the the thinking that, oh, we're just going to be able to have these, you know, 3,000 uh, empty homes that now go into the rental market or whatever. That's that's just wrong. And and it's funny because I've talked with a few people in in the city administration. And they have clearly stated to me that they don't even know how many empty homes there are on Oahu. They there's some estimates that there's eighty thousand. There's some estimates that there's thirty thousand. There's some that's twenty thousand. So how do you enforce something that you don't even know mm-hmm. what you're looking at? I. I th- Personally, it's the offensiveness that it is government with mandates that make you 
do what they desire you, even though it's your private affair. It's right. just an incursion into... There's a difference between, in my opinion, compelling and coercing. And this is just way over the top. And are we going to have a police force now that, that is going to gonna enforce. enforce that? Yep. I mean, you know, how much is that going to cost And and in terms of what we're bringing in? So... It's just, to me, it's a lose-lose situation, and, and hopefully the council can can uh, strike that down. I know on Big Island they proposed it back in November, and the public outcry was so outrageous that the bill still hasn't dropped. You know, there's more topicality. I'd like to get into downtown Honolulu with you because, well, I live there, but uh, there's so much time and attention. But I'd, I'd like to get your take before we go in just the minute and a half we have left. You mentioned before there was outrage and there was. How how does grassroots have in your formula of incentivizing citizens to do exactly that, to react, to protest, to be proactive, to et cetera, et cetera? Exactly. So we actually we, we put out a, a weekly newsletter every Friday um, that it kind of just gives a rundown of, of some of the topics and, and some of the things that we find interesting. But then we also uh, put out a President's Corner. Our President Kili Iakina mm-hmm. writes this President's Corner, and that comes out on Saturdays. So if you're interested in, in reading those, you can sign up on our website. But also on our website, you go on grassrootinstitute.org slash action. You can uh, take a look there. There's some, some ways that you can write into the governor right now have him sign or veto a bill, and and really just voice your opinion. Ted, I want to thank you very, very much. Can't wait till the next time. Yeah, thank you, Rick. Really appreciate it.